Arkles, Moonlight, Amber Rail. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one today from the Arkles Brewery, which is based in a place called Swindon, which is in Wiltshire, in getting on to the sort of southwest part of the United Kingdom. And this was given to me by a subscriber. His name is Mark. He knows who he is. Purveyor of terrible beer. Hopefully this one won't be a bad one. What I like about this there's a few things. Firstly, they're an old traditional British brewer. They have been going since 1843, I think it is. And what I really do like about this, and I just happened to notice it as I picked it up, and I recognised it straight away because it's instantly recognisable. If you can see that, oh, let me get that autofocus on the go. See that plane now? That is a plane called a Westland Lysander. And they were planes that were used by the RAF during World War II. And as you know, I love my World War II history. But what's really interesting about these planes is that they were used for dropping secret agents into enemy occupied territory, picking up downed airmen that had been taken in by the resistance, and they would be then flown back to the United Kingdom. The reason that they used these planes, they required a very short takeoff <coughs> and short landing strip so they could land in places where a lot of other planes couldn't land and take off. They also had quite, quite rugged undercarriage on that so they could land on rough terrain and not do any damage to the plane. Now, they were unarmed, so the people who flew these were very brave. I mean, you, you think about it, you're flying into enemy occupied territory. But the reason it's on there, and that's, this is the, the interesting part, it does link in with the brewery. I'm not just going on a fucking ego trip telling you about World War II and all this. The, the, uh, this is a family-run brewery, and as I say, it's founded in 1943 by a fellow called John Arkell. In 2003, there was a beer to celebrate the wartime service of the CEO of Arkell's Brewery whose name was Peter Arkell. And he used to fly in the RAF and he used to fly these missions, picking up the agents and downed airmen to and from France, which I think is absolutely amazing. And the fact that they've done this beer really is good. But there's a lot on this, on this label that is really descriptive of the beer and of the brewery as well. It's, it was actually a steam brewery when it first set out in 1843 and it coincided with the expansion of the railway system in that part of the world. Isambard Kingdom Brunel, if you've never heard of him, look him up. One of the greatest British engineers of the Victorian era. He expanded the railway system and the brewery coincided with this to provide beer for the people who were working on the railway and also the people using the railway as well. Now it was a steam brewery, which is how most breweries operated at the time. And it was also a tower brewery as well. And a tower brewery is, how it basically works is it is a tower. The raw ingredients goes in the top of the tower. It works its way down through the various stages of brewing and fermentation. And at the bottom, you get your finished article in the cask. That's the theory behind it anyway. And there's a couple of breweries that still operate like that. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I think Hook Norton does the same as well. But here's a diagram of how a tower brewery actually works. So 
So now you know. So just a little bit more about Arkles Brewery before I get onto the beer. They own quite a few pubs, 90 to be precise, all around the southeast. And London as well, I think, is, is included in that. Some are free houses. You know, they don't just stock Arkles beer. They can stock whatever they want. But they're a reasonably big concern. And as I say, they brew traditional British beer. But they've also ventured into the newer styles of American IPA and all that. So all in all, on paper, they look like a really good brewery. Let's see what their beer tastes like. Right, it's an amber ale. It's 4.5% ABV. It's a free, it's a 500 ml bottle. There's some interesting hops in this. They have got Susan hops. No, that's not the name of a bird. And they have Fuggles as well. Now, Susan hops. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like a fucking a noun, doesn't it? But it's not. They are actually a style of hops, they're hedgerow hops, which means, as the name says, they're not grown on the vines, they are grown on hedgerows, supposedly more resilient on hedgerows. I don't know whether that's a fact or not, but that's what they say. They are floral, they have some lemon citrus to them, and, and they have a little bit of spice on them too. So that's quite an interesting combination. And of course, Fuggles, the archetypal British hop, earth and spice, that's what they're renowned for. There's also got a little bit of fruit on them as well. So in fact, it's probably more fruity and earthy than it is spicy, but it also depends on which, you know, what sort of temperature you, you boil them or you put them into the boil at. Tasting notes on this says it's fruity, citrus and malty. Uh, the taste, uh, that's the aroma. The taste is chocolate, lemon and fruity. Really, for an amber beer? Mm, okay. Moonlight was originally a special in 2003 to celebrate the birthday of Pete Arkell, OBE, the late father of the present chairman, James. The name Moonlight portrays Peter's mission flying low-level sorties over France in 1943, picking up agents in occupied territory using the moon to land. Yeah, because you couldn't use any radar or anything like that. There was no radio communication because the, the Germans would have picked that up straight away and knew what was going on. The label on the bottom has a Lysander plane on it. Yeah, this is the plane I was talking about, which Peter Arkell actually, Peter Arkell actually flew in. Interesting. This has won quite a few awards as well. And there's a camera award in there. There's a World Beer Award. And yeah, it looks interesting. Let's crack it open and let's see what's going on. Now, amber ale could arguably be classed as a bitter in certain, or certain brewers call amber ale a bitter and vice versa. So I don't know what this is gonna taste like. There is the cap, silver cap with Arkles written on it. Any football fans who, who've been up to Merseyside will know that there is a pub called the Arkle. It has nothing to do with that. That is named after a racehorse. It's an away fans pub as well, so all you Scousers will not be going in there when there's a game on. Wow, this really does seem very fizzy indeed. Can you hear that? Carbonation. There it is in the glass. I can smell it from here. That is decidedly fruity, I will say that. Dogs are killing each other, as usual. Some citrus and floral notes on there, like lemon citrus. It was like a floral note on that too. Let me see, just fill it up a little bit more, see what else we can get. Yeah, a touch of caramel malt on that as well. But it's mainly, well it's all about the, the citrus and the floral notes. Mm. It smells interesting. Now this is the first one I've ever had from this lot. I don't know what to expect. I don't know whether their beers are quality or not. So, 
Let's stop guessing and find out. Bottoms up. Dive in again. Reasonably nice biscuit malt finish on the end. There's not not a great deal in the mouth to be honest. Or is it just me? Biscuit and caramel malt finish. That's what I'm getting <clears throat> in the mouth. It's it's a bit of a, a mishmash of of subtle floral flavours. Carbonation is quite good actually. I know it was reasonably fizzy as it was poured out, but that seems to have calmed down and it's quite smooth now. If you look at it in the glass, you'll still see there's a fair amount of carbonation in that, but they're very, very fine bubbles, and that translates into the mouthfeel. So the mouthfeel isn't too bad. Caramel's coming through a little bit more now on that. I think this is one of them ones where you need to have a few mouthfuls and then you get the sort of the real gist of what's going on. The first couple of mouthfuls I wasn't getting much at all to be honest. But I have to say it's shaping up to be reasonably good. I did say that it was <clears throat> it could potentially be a bitter but it's not, it hasn't got any spice on the finish at all. So it, it's, in the true sense of the word, an amber ale. Quite a nice one. Getting more of the malt character coming through now. There's caramel malt, subtle biscuit malt now. That biscuit malt was bigger to start off with and it's it's calmed down again now and it's that's given way to the, the caramel malt on this. And it does get it does get very moorish the more it goes down. It's weird because I'm really not getting much in the mouth apart from the caramel. But then as it sort of goes to the back of the throat, that's when all the the nice floral flavours. There's not much lemon citrus on this. I thought there would be from that aroma. But it's it's mainly about the malt. Now I've, I've got this at what I would call cellar temperature. It's not chilled, but it's not room temperature. And I think that's probably, the, in my opinion, that's probably the best temperature to get the aromas from this beer. And I have to say, this is growing on me. Mm. It's not outstanding, but it's reasonably nice. I haven't got any compl anything to complain about, really. Um, it's just a, a nice, easy drinking amber ale. Nothing nasty in there. Mouthfeel is quite nice. Um, head retention is reasonable, considering the temperature of this. Room's quite warm at the moment, heating's on. 4.5% uh, reasonably sessionable 
there's there's a fair bit to like about this beer. It's not bad at all. Not the best, certainly. There's there's much better amber rail out there, but I'll tell you something, it isn't the worst either. So what's the verdict on Moonlight Amber Ale? This isn't bad. I like the I like the label on this. That did turn me onto this beer. Now I got a delivery from Beers of Europe today, and I was given this today. My missus picked it up from where she was working. Obviously, she doesn't work there now because of the because of the COVID and all that, but she had to pick something up from work and there was a couple of beers waiting for me there. She brought them home. And immediately when I saw the label, I was intrigued, done a bit of research and I thought, oh, I have got to try this beer. I'm glad I did. First one from Arkles. This isn't bad. I don't think it's one of their core beers, but it's uh, certainly one of their, their bottled beers that they've continued to sell after 2003. It is not a bad beer. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Just for the whole package. It's The label's nice. The, the whole flavour of this beer. It's, it's not outstanding. It doesn't give you the, the big, massive flavours that I would expect from some of them you know, real good breweries that do bitters and the amber ales with big, big caramel malt, big British hops in them. This is this is quite toned down, but it slips down really nicely. Yeah, and as I say, the more it goes down, the nicer it is. Yeah, I think, I think seven out of 10 is a pretty good mark for that. And uh, I definitely recommend this. Now, I'm probably going to get some more of this um, Arkell Brewery stuff because I have never tried it before. That is the first time. Never seen it in a shop down here. Yeah, and they're, they're based in Swindon, which is sort of a fair way from Kent. But, yeah, first one for me. I'll be investigating this lot again. Nice one. 7 out of 10, recommended. And remember... Beer is working class champagne.